All righty, Aikido aces. I know that's like a weird way to start, but I'm running out of new ways to greet people. I think I'm going to start speaking German or something, which I don't know German, but I guess I'll learn it. Just to keep my originality. I do it for you. Anyways, today we are doing yet another episode of Karate Corner with our golden boy, Steven Seagal. This movie is called Submerged, and I'm pretty excited because some of you said it was watchable, others said it was terrible, and I'm pretty sure it's probably both. So let's get to it because this is Red Eye Reviews. Alrighty fam, let's jump right into this mamma jamma. You know the drill, we get plot synopsis first, followed by some red-eyed reactions. You know, that segment where I highlight the ridiculousness that makes these movies probably my all-time favorites to watch. We start with, uh, the, um, I'm not, I'm not really sure what this is. An indie horror movie? I mean, hold on, are we, we're watching the right movie. It's a submarine movie, yeah? Okay, yeah, I mean, there's Seagal, he's looking as great as ever, so it's gotta be the right movie. Well, during this nightmare on Elm Street, we hear some noise about mind control and brainwashing. We thankfully escape this dream back to the U.S. Embassy in Montevideo, Uruguay. How about some donuts this morning? If you're buying, I'll have two glazed and a jelly roll. <laughs> That's a power move. She offers you donuts and you ask for three. Not just any old three. One's a jelly-filled donut, which is basically a pancake calzone. And uh, note to self, pancake calzone. Brilliant idea. Okay, sorry, where were we? Over at a secret evil military base, a man with the coolest flip phone of all time is busy texting his bros. Yeah, whatever, henchman, you're just jealous of his advanced technology. But what he's actually doing on his phone is sending a signal to these secret service agents that apparently were mind-controlled, so they kill everybody around, including this ambassador, and then kill each other. And I'm not one to poke holes in logic. Alright, who am I kidding? I'm totally the one to poke holes in logic. But wouldn't it have been easier to just have one guy shoot the other two and then off himself? This timing seems really hard to pull off. Hey, don't mind me. This is your brainwashy business thing. I'm just an observer. So later in Washington, D.C., Dr. Chapel, played by Christine Adams, who's like a legit actress. I don't know how we wound up with her in this movie. Anyway, she tells everyone that it appears to have been mind control that led to the assassinations. So a Delta Force commando team is sent to Uruguay to investigate. Wow, your very real helicopter looks fantastic. I wish I had a helicopter that looked half as cool. So the team gets dropped off, and it's an ambush. We also see their leader struggling hardcore. And then he tells everybody to stand down and let them get captured. And then 12 minutes into this movie, and still no Seagal. Hold on, do you hear that music? Yeah, that's, that's probably the most intense music to ever be used for such a slow boring, and oddly pathetic walk. What kind of damn fool you think I am? I'm still in prison for doing the same thing you're about to ask me to do again. Oh, God, no. Are you going to use that voice for the whole movie? So they tell Seagal that they need him and his crew to infiltrate that same facility and find those commandos and whatever they can get their hands on. So they decide to hire Seagal to do this job, but he needs his dope-ass crew to work with him as well. And your crew is very, uh, how do I put this? White male heavy? But real talk, Vinnie Jones is great. He's another actor that's probably a bit too good to be in this movie. Don't you know who I am? I'm the juggernaut, bitch! Okay, well, you know, he might be the exact right level of talent to be in this movie now that I'm thinking about it. What that means is, he got something sensitive that has to be done. And if we do it right... We're all free. Can you speak up, please? We, we're having a hard time hearing you in the front. They all go to the landing zone and probably my favorite movie troll of all time. Where are you going? <laughs> like, genuinely, that is hilarious. They just ditch him. And for real, they never come back for this guy. They just, <laughs> they just leave him. However, it turns out Seagal's spidey senses were right because this guy's totally going to double cross him. So I guess good call. And now Seagal has become painfully aware that his party is entirely too male and hairy. So he calls for an attractive girl partner to meet them. Our new landing zone should read Starry Night. Yeah, yeah. I hear that horrible voiceover. Is that what you're asking? Starry Night, you copy that? Meanwhile, our bad guy doctor has decided he no longer needs his non-brainwashed henchmen. Basically, his mind-controlled ones are better. Product test. Yeah, see? You'd get fired for doing something like that with a normal coworker, But so he kills off the other guys and he runs away with his brainwashed troopers. Vinnie Jones reminds us that he is a real psychopath. Like, 
actually a psychopath. The heat from the flames sees their throats close. They can't even scream. Yeah, I really don't think that's true. Every war movie I've ever seen, dudes on fire are screaming. Actually, no, hold on, let's check. I bet there's a scene in this movie with a screaming dude on fire. Um, yeah, yeah. Four minutes later, screaming guy on fire. Finny, you are some sort of sick bastard, and you fit perfectly into this movie. So the group goes to take whatever evidence they can find and destroy the place in the process, but as they are escaping, they get attacked. You would think these guys would pose a threat because there's so many of them, and a tank. But they must have went to the stormtrooper school to learn how to shoot because they're all awful. Yeah, but whatever, they all get out and they blow the base up. Yeah, it's probably best he didn't stay on that shot for too long. Those graphics look real good. Almost as good as that helicopter from earlier. And just an FYI, the voiceover in this movie is just as bad as the previous movies. I'm just going to let a scene play out. Just one, just to give you a taste of what I'm talking about. Yes, ma'am. Chief, I want this bitch in an you here. So tell me, what you got? And as far as I'm concerned, it was mission accomplished. We went in there, destroyed the base, and took all the prisoners. Really, really good stuff. Okay, sorry, I have to give you one more. Hey, Louis, float that radio boy. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Like, Seagal must whisper all of his lines, or he just sucks at speaking clearly, because this is quickly becoming a pattern in these movies. Oh, and then for no reason whatsoever, these two girls fight to prove who's more badass. I really don't think we needed that, but it, it happens. Oh, I forgot to mention, we're on a submarine now. They, they just go get a sub. The movie's called Submerged. They're barely on this submarine, so I'm not really going to go over it too much. But while they were destroying the base, a couple dudes went and got a submarine. While that girl fight is happening, the men that they rescued from the old base are obviously brainwashed as well. So they attack the good guys in the ship in an attempt to, like, sink it. But we do get a classic Vinnie Jones crazy face. That's great stuff. Probably worth the ticket price alone. You know, if the movie was in theaters. Which it wasn't. Yeah, classic knife fight. This is going to be great. And short. Damn it, man. That could have really cemented this movie as like the sequel to Under Siege 2. But you screwed it up. What a shame. Yeah, I know. It should have been at least eight minutes longer. Okay, so let's catch up real quick. The brainwashed ones want to submerge and destroy the sub. The lady who works for the government wants to go topside. However, Seagal knows if they go to the surface, the military will probably just destroy them because they know the brainwashed soldiers and a disc of evidence are on the submarine and they don't want it coming back to bite them in the butt. So basically, we kill the bad guys, a couple of the crew die in the process, we go up to the surface, we get in a lifeboat real quick, and then the government blows the sub up. They now think everyone on board is dead. But the gang floats back to shore. I, they must have had paddles. I don't know. They get back to shore and decide to continue their little mission to find this brainwashed magician and stop his evil plot. Which his evil plot is like, kill people who don't like him and brainwash everybody else. That's basically what he's attempting to do. So they decide to take the fight to the bad guys and really quick, I know I've already shown you some pretty bad voiceover, but can I just give you one more taste of how horrible it is? Gives us a good distraction, don't it? Uh, they're beating on each other up in there. Well, I don't know. I never seen any English saga match, but uh. What makes this even worse is it's clear that Vinnie Jones is saying his lines in that car. So whatever Seagal said, they just scrapped it. The only thing that could save this movie at this point is probably a bunch of pointless zooms and quick edited cuts. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm back in. So while the group is looking for the baddies, the baddies kidnap Dr. Chapel and plan on brainwashing her, like they do everybody they capture. We didn't kill the ambassador for taking those surveillance photographs. <sighs> do you guys want to maybe turn the AC on in the car? You both look extremely uncomfortable. Okay, so the crew learns that something is going down at the opera and decides to head that way to try to stop the brainwashed minions from, like, assassinating a higher-up who knows about this entire operation and evil doings, and he's kind of evil too, but they meet up with that man outside the opera for like a quick chat. You're sitting in the same box with Sandro, the owner. I will discuss the ethics of this with him later. And then you tell him, I will pause after every single word I say. So they go inside, we see our gunman getting ready to take his shot, 
But at the same time, the rest of the crew is trying to catch up to Seagal and help him out at the opera. Ticket, senor. He's my fucking ticket. Oh. You know, any other movie I talk crap about that weird jump cut, but in this movie, I'm just going to show it to you. Don't know what that's about. So everyone gets inside and shit hits the collective fan. Multiple people turn out to be brainwashed agents. Some of our favorite people die or get captured. However, Seagal manages to escape with the double crosser guy. You're not going to walk out of here nice, easy, like we're friends. And what are you implying with this? Are you saying all of your friends get killed? Because that's kind of what it looks like you're trying to tell us. And at this point, the baddies are all pretty nervous, knowing that Seagal is coming for him. So we get an attempt at a double cross, but he's like, uh, I, I brainwashed everybody, so I'm going to brainwash you, too. It's, what I, it's my thing. I like to brainwash people. However, while the mind control magician is trying to escape, Seagal wrecks his helicopter. Not a CGI one. This is like, maybe a real one? It's probably where all the budget went. So he runs back inside just in time to see his old coworker escaping and throwing him perfectly into the machine to kill him. That's impressive. That's a really good throw, if I could say so. Seagal and his new friend get out of the car, and all of these guys have now been brainwashed, so they kill their own boss. Seagal then cleans up house and takes everybody out. This dude comes up in an elevator. I think he's supposed to be a bigger deal than he is, but this fight's like super quick. He heads downstairs just in time to come across Mr. Big Eyes here. Yeah, that's right. I sat for a solid 20 minutes trying to think of something clever to say, and it never came to me. So his name is Mr. Big Eyes. Moving on, and he kicks him like 50 feet to his death. So now with all the bad guys gone, the remaining good guys all gather to celebrate and we see the eye of Dr. Chapel twitch. So she's probably brainwashed, but the dude with like the 90s flip phone thing is dead, so I, I think we're okay. And the movie ends here. Alrighty, that was Submerged. And I must say, if it wasn't for all the god-awful voice acting, that would have been a favorite Seagal movie of mine. Maybe like top five. But the voiceovers and the random jump edits and weird sound effects plunge this movie into the depths with all of his other works. But we still get to have some fun here, so let's head on over to Red Eye Reacts. Hey. Come on, we're going and clean, you know this. No persons. Yeah, that would have been good advice if you didn't have your own name on your helmet. Thorns in America's side. Who the fuck is this? Shouldn't you warn Cody's men about what happened to the first team? They're expendable. Did you just say they're expendables? Wait a second, when did the expendables come out? 2010, oh shit. Another Seagal idea stolen by Big Hollywood. Alert the press. That's where the new landing's done close to the coast. And it's going to be right about him. You, you're like, you're from Louisiana now? What is this? Right about him. The Damascus, another 9-11. Except at sea. Yeah, I really don't think it was, though. There's some sick shit up in here, alligator. You got ten minutes. You get your white ass out of here, you hear me? I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. I love working with professionals. You guys should really get that elevator fixed. I know that knock. Yeah, I know that knock, too. It's the knock of the guy that I can see because the door is made of glass. Yeah, Mr. Ambassador, I'm Cody. I think you've been expecting me. Talk about being tough all the time. Can't even look me in the eyes. Okay. Yeah, I uh, just hit country and got kind of busy, but... Um... Look at me when you're talking to me! Welcome to Hollywood Squares. After you, Doctor. You 100% built this set just for that shitty joke, and I couldn't be happier. That was submerged. Again, not too bad, but nowhere near good. Next up will be Today You Die. A former thief wants to go straight, but he seeks vengeance on those who framed him first, and yeah, sure, can't wait for that. Got a 4 out of 10 on IMDb, which is like two points higher than a lot of his movies, so maybe it stands a chance. I guess we'll all find out together next time. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. Like the video, hit the bell, do the comments, tell me some stuff. Did you get a haircut recently? Got a new pair of shoes? Let me know. I don't know. We'll see you in the next video. And until that moment, stay happy and stay healthy.